right now we have five people working on the team, and they all have a specific role. We have a guy that uh, works on the mocap, and we have a guy that models all of the head geometry for the characters. We have a guy, which is me, that models the bodies for the characters. We have a guy that uh, textures the characters and makes them look pretty and nice and gritty or whatever. And we also have a guy that uh, generates level of detail models for the characters. After you get a solid design, you uh, model the character in 3D. In 3D. And uh, that's the key part of the process, the modeling, because without the modeling, the characters, no matter how good the textures turn out, the character might not look as real as we like it to be. So uh, modeling is very key. So we model the character and we scan the character so that he can uh, animate. And, uh, and then we generate LODs, level detail models. And then we export the character and put him into the game engine and see how he works out. And then it's a lot of tweaking involved. Sometimes it never works perfectly the first time. So we'll go back and uh, retweak the geometry or textures or whatever and then export the character again and put it back into the game. The Ghost Recon characters are very different from the characters in Rogue Spear because uh, obviously polygon count, we have a higher polygon budget on the Ghost Recon characters. But beyond that, the Ghost Recon characters have a lot more bulk than the uh, Rogue Spear characters because Rogue Spear characters had to be sneaky and quiet and stealth, take a stealth approach and they couldn't carry as much gear. And the Ghost Recon characters, they have to carry a lot of gear so they look, you can immediately see the difference because they look bulky and they have a lot of packs and all kind of gear on them. So they look a lot heavier and they have to, they have to because it's a different type of game. They're not so they're not, they're not so much concerned about the uh, close quarter combat or the stealth. They just get in and try to get out. Well, the whole key to this type of game uh, is realism and trying to be authentic. And we felt that the best way to capture the realism was to capture a real person. And we've done that through all the, throughout all the the uh, Rainbow projects, and including this Ghost Recon project. And we felt that. Why break a thing? Why break a good thing when it works? So, yeah, that was a challenge because uh, we tried to we tried a couple of different things, like for the death motions while a guy's running. We had a guy that would stand on one end of the mat in the motion capture studio, and he would run basically, you know, run, doing his uh, movement, and he would run, and we'd have a guy standing at the end of the mat waiting for him, and when he came off the mat, he'd push him so that he could fall over and try to simulate the hit. So that worked out pretty good. So that's how we captured the, the motions for guys running and getting hit. And for the bullet hits, when a guy takes a bullet, we tried, we tried to like nudge the guy with like a pole or something, a stick, and try to simulate it like that. But that didn't turn out too good because the, the motions ended up being kind of slow. And we need the motions to snap because when, when you get hit with a bullet, it's like phew, you get hit hard. So we ended up having a guy that was motion that was uh, performing just simulating getting hit when we took where we told him where to get hit at so if he was getting hit in the head he'd uh, get in his position and then his, uh, his head would snap to the side or whatever and we just tried to uh, we just tried to capture we tried to think about all the possible ways the guy could get hit and try to capture all those and we basically just generalized so if a guy's getting hit in the head we have a shot where he gets hit in the head in the front, the back, the left, or the side, or wherever. Well, Damon Rogers is our effects artist. Um, he uses 3D Studio Max and he does it through a lot of particle animation or a billboard animation. Uh, him collaborating with the engineer Curtis Smith, those two guys uh, sort of do a trial and error on all the effects. They'll try one thing and, and then they see how it looks in the game and they make modifications on that. But uh, mainly it's through the particles that we can achieve more realistic looking smoke, more realistic looking fire, um, and it comes across with pretty impressive results. Um, one of the best effects in the game is probably the, um, the reflection of the buildings in Mission 11, the Valenius mission. Um, that was a pretty cool effect where you're walking down the streets and you look in the puddles and you can actually see the reflection of the buildings in the water. Um, that was a trick and it's, you know, any aspiring effects artist out there should 
try to figure out how we did it. It's very, very intense, and especially uh, co-op mode is a lot of fun. When you're playing with a guy sitting next to you or even via the internet, you know, or somebody in a, in a different room and you're, and you're walking around together trying to take out the enemies, it's, there's a lot of uh, anxiety about, you know, what you're doing next. It's really, it's a lot of fun. The outside spaces are, initially were much more challenged to design, to come up with a process to get them into the game properly and to make sure that they were fun. Once we got past that challenge, it became actually much easier. Uh, once we had the basic play mechanics figured out and the things that we were we knew worked, then it was uh, much easier to implement those on, on later missions. Where on Rainbow Six or Rogue Spear, um, you had to continually design as you went. And with a smaller team, we didn't have as much opportunity to revise what we had put in. I think what they'll like like most and what I like most about it is that it follows the same lines as the Rainbow Six series in terms of overall kind of look. Uh, we've established our own type of look, but it takes it ten times better. Uh, we've added much better lighting, and that's one of the first things people noticed when we started releasing screenshots and things, was the lighting is a lot better. Um, so you have the same knowledge and kind of you feel comfortable with the technology when you're playing the game but it just looks so much better. And we've been able to do so many more things that we've always wanted to do in the Rainbow series. Um, the Ghosts are a, a special forces unit in the U.S. Army. Um, they're Green Berets. Um, they don't get all the tough assignments. They get a lot of tough assignments, but then the Green Berets always get a lot of tough assignments. Um, to the player who's playing the game, you might feel like oh, you're single-handedly fighting the war, but, but really what's going on is there are lots of units like the Ghosts who are out doing things in parallel with you. There are lots of, uh, of armored divisions and uh, other special forces units who are doing missions. Um, you just don't hear about them because you're focused entirely on, on what you're doing. Um, we do have some specialist characters that get brought in if you complete special mission objectives, and those are drawn from, uh, from other backgrounds. Some of them are special U.S. Army Special Forces, um, some are, are British or German units that are temporary, British or German soldiers that are temporary, temporarily attached to your unit. Um, some of them are um, partisans that you might find fighting um, uh, alongside the, um, the people you're trying to help and some of the, um, um, some of the other missions that are brought in uh, to t be temporarily attached to your unit. So they're, there's a wide variety, but the core team is, is all Special Forces. Um, keep moving. <laughs> There's a tremendous temptation to sort of just um, stop and snipe at the enemy at, the, at a distance and say, oh, there's somebody, I'll, I'll, I'll shoot at him, I'll shoot at him. And um, that works in a lot of shooters. Um, what will happen in Ghost Recon is that the AI will come after you if you do that. And so if you t intend to just sort of hang back and pick people off from a distance, that usually doesn't work very well. Um, the other big tip is um, be sure to use your other teams. Um, by sending um, your, your other fire teams in along with you um, by using the command map, um, you can deliver a lot of firepower really quickly and, and totally overwhelm the enemy before they even know what's hit, what, what hits them. Whereas if you go in by yourself, you're really relying entirely on your own twitch skills and with sort of the one-shot kill thing, um, it's hard to take somebody out that way. Okay, well, I think that every producer is going to be different in the sense that we're all kind of jack of all trades. Um, with me, my background kind of brought some music and audio um, experience into the fold. And so I was able to work with Brian a little bit and develop some high-level ideas for the game. And then we'll pass that along to the team and, and see that idea come to fruition. Um, on the other hand, um, the, the team and the design group is in charge of the game and so um, I really try not to intervene unless I feel that the overall game design isn't meeting uh, the original concept that we came up with for Ghost Recon. We work with Sound Deluxe Design Music Group and it isn't the first time that we've worked with them. We've, we've worked with them on several titles in the past. And I think it's through the, uh, those past experiences that we've both learned and, and grown uh, in terms of what makes good game audio content. And so this time around, uh, Sound Deluxe set up a firing range 
and uh, did some live weapon fires out there. And uh, I think it's going to make for some really intense firefights in Ghost Recon. Um, well, right now Ghost Recon is super fun. Uh, it's very intense, very loud, very in your face. Uh, lots of action, lots of explosions, just lots of big effects. Um, it's like ro Rogue Spear on steroids. I mean, it's so huge. Um, every time I play it, I just start getting breaking out in cold sweats and getting all scared and start ducking my head and peeking around corners. Uh, it's just a really, really intense game. Well, I like to think it's really just a balance of both. Um, it has its combat sim and that it's realistic. One shot, you die. One shot to the head, you're dead. One shot to the leg, you know, you're limping around, you're seriously impaired. Um, however, it's also, I mean, we know we want to, it's, this is a game, it has to be fun. So we're doing everything we can to make sure that the, the sounds are so cool, you know. The, the situations we put the player in and the problems they have to overcome are really fun. Um, so yeah, it's just a nice combination of both. Um, well, restaurants had a nice working relationship with the military and other uh, organizations in the past. Um, however, the nature of our relationship is needs to be kept kind of quiet. Uh, they've been a great help. They've given us a lot of research material, um, but as what they've actually given you, I'm sorry, I can't really elaborate further. Um, well, we wanted the project to be different from Rogue Spear. So that was one of the big challenges, was to not fall into the same niche that we fell into um, in the past few projects. We wanted this to be its own product that had interesting things aside from what we've done in the past. We've done a lot of modifications on the engine. Um, it's basically been revamped from Rogue Spear. We use a few of, this, of the same collision detection methods, but the whole engine and the way the loop works is completely different. We use a um, message passing architecture that's going to allow the multiplayer aspects of the game to be much more stable. Well, there's a new multiplayer game type that I'm excited about. Um, the player is going to be able to take AI backup with him when he plays a multiplayer game. So you can play against your buddies and their AI backup versus you and your AI backup. So I think that's going to make for some very interesting gameplay experiences. We tried to uh, cut out a lot of the glitching, a lot of the uh, feet shuffling and sliding. A lot of that happened in, uh, in the Rogue Spear and Rainbow Six. So the character animator worked real hard at uh, trying to prevent that. And I think he pulled it off pretty well. Mm. Well, I would have to say that my favorite thing about the game, that's another point that's hard to like pinpoint. Um, the only thing that comes to mind are like the labors of love. It's the, the user interface, Sloan, Sloan Anderson worked on the user interface and uh, he went through so many iterations of the shell and the user interface to try to get it perfect. We uh, went through it with fine tooth comb, we, we've gone through it back and forth trying to make sure that it's intuitive, that, uh, you know, that it's sophisticated and because of the number of things that you can do out on the battlefield are represented by the shell, it has to be sophisticated, it has to be a sophisticated shell and it has to be intuitive the player so we we really did go back and forth through that uh, so many times just to make sure that it was workable you know a lot of games you get through the game and you don't you don't recognize a shell well if you don't recognize a shell that means it actually did its job it's one of those understated under, you know players in the game my favorite mission is the battlefield uh, actually that's not giving much away because it was shown at a few of the press events the reason that it is the most my, my favorite is that it is probably the most realistic representation of war that I can come up with. Uh, luckily, I have never had to be in actual war, so uh, to me it represents what I feel war would be like. Bullets flying all around, constant action, um, getting surrounded at times, having to change your plans on the fly because the enemy did something you didn't expect, which uh, I, I'm guessing happens all the time in war. So, to me, it was, it is the the most realistic representation of of a war simulation or or a war scenario that I've seen in a game. 
Uh, the gameplay of Ghost Recon is just incredibly intense for me. Uh, sticking your head around corners, just knowing that any instant you can die. When you hear bullets whizzing over your head and you can't find who's shooting at you, that, just that whole feeling for me is just incredible. Just makes the adrenaline start flowing. Well, the graphics are great, the, um, the gameplay is great, but the, the big thing I think that's really going to stand out is the way the AI works. Um, we've really improved on how the enemies react. Uh, they're going to throw grenades at you and flank you and do all kinds of interesting things that will surprise the player. Oh, there's tons of exciting projects that I'm uh, utterly unable to talk about. <laughs> would you classify that as top secret? Uh, yes, I would.